ディオほう向かってくるのか逃げずにこのディオに近づいてくるのかせっかく祖父のジョセフが私のザワールドの正体を試験終了チャイム直前まで問題を解いている受験生のような必死こいた気分で教えてくれたというのに近づかなきゃてめえをぶちのめせないんだなほうほうでは十分近づくがよいいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいや I would bet on the fact that you like to play them. See, the best part of video games is being able to run up to them and play them and make things happen on the screen. That's right. Interaction. Who'd have thought? Interactive media is interactive. Seems like a pretty new concept to me, but、uh, I'm no professional, so who knows? So that's kind of what I started thinking about this week. How do I make this thing that is very non interactive? Into an interactive thing that will make people say, Wow, that's pretty fun. Because at the end of the day, we're all playing video games for fun. Unless you play like League of Legends or Valorant or something, then you're probably a fing loser that doesn't like having fun. The point is, is I'm very tired of working on something that I can't really actually interact with. And that's why this week I started working on my engine user interface system. I started by working on a little bit of a plan for the user interface system. Then after that, I had a whole boatload of tasks to get done and I was ready to start programming. So, I started by writing this nice little UI component class. It contains a lot of useful functionality for all UI components, like getting its position based on all of its parent stuff, and also generating a generic mesh for user interface rendering. So, it's pretty well set up. And then over here, we have a nice little UI panel renderer class that just handles all the rendering of different UI components. We can go over to the demo I've set up of the UI system, and down here there's a nice little UI component that is parented to the panel. The panel is the red square that you see around the outside of the entire window. The best part of the UI system is that it's really flexible in terms of where you can position components inside of it. So, like for example, I can take this bottom left component. And instead, I can bind it to the far right or the middle top or really anywhere else on the screen that I want to. So that works really, really well. So that leaves me with the next task of rendering UI, which is、uh, UI textures, which is not exactly the thing I've been looking forward to the most. When you render textures, the first thing you have to do is import the image that you want to use into the game engine. And while that sounds like a pretty easy task, if we crack this bad boy open, there's a lot of ugly data that comes out of it. But lucky for me, I don't actually have to process this data because there are a million different libraries that have all been written to do this already. The image loading library that I ended up going with for this little project is called Sail. So I'll just yoink him and、uh, toss him into my engine and.、Uh, Bob's your uncle with a simple texture loader class and a little bit of effort into making sure all the mesh data was rendered correctly. Uh oh, stinky. Nice. So, with image loading done and dusted, I could mark that task complete on my Trello board, and then it was time to move on to、uh, click detection. And this is where I have hit my first true barrier in engine development. See, click detection and collision detection are two very similar things. In fact, so similar that I'd like to do them with the same system, ideally. At the current moment, I know nothing about collision detection, and that's an entire field of study on its own. A big enough field of study to warrant me getting myself a new $90 best friend. 
bringing my grand total of friends up to a whopping eight friends. I don't want to brag, but that's a lot of f***ing friends. I got a lot of reading to do before I can really do anything with click detection. And upon closer inspection of the next few steps for my game engine in general, it turns out that collision detection is going to be very, very important. So important that I really can't move forward until I have some of this reading done. But that's okay because it gives us a great opportunity to talk about the game I'm actually going to be working on. Hold on to your hats because it's been two weeks, so you know what that means. It's time for me to start a new project entirely. For those of you that haven't been around for the past few weeks, the reason that I wanted to make a, my own game engine was because I was going to try and make my own gravity-based puzzle game. But I realized that a puzzle game like this would require a ton of physics work. And uh, looking at the way that game physics work on the internet just very briefly kind of made me my pants a little bit. So, uh, sorry South is down. I'm gonna need you to wait for a later date, buddy. But I do have an idea for a game that lends itself very well to me writing my own game engine. Some of you may have heard of this very small genre called the city builder genre, including such games as SimCity or City Skylines. This is a genre that I have found a lot of pleasure in in the past, and I would love to develop my own city builder game. I remember a long time ago I was playing this game called Banished. I remember playing through the entire thing and thinking, wow, it would be so cool if I could take this civilization from the Stone Age to space. And so that's the game that I'm going to be developing. A city builder game where you take your civilization of people from the Stone Age all the way to space. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and stick around because it's going to be a good time working on this game. It's going to be a lot of failure, a lot of learning, but hopefully just as much success at the same time. I can't wait to get started on it next week, but that's going to do it for me for the day. Please drop a like if you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Bye.